this video, we're going to discuss the technique of complete mesocolic excision. As we all know, the right mesocolon has paracolic, intermediate, and main lymph nodes. According to the Japanese literature, the incidence of lymph node metastasis in the main nodes for T1 cancer is non-existent. For T2 tumors, main lymph node involvement is around 1%. And although there is not concrete evidence for a complete mesocolic excision, this can be justified given that preoperative diagnosis of depth of invasion is not always accurate. For T3, T4 tumors, main lymph node involvement is considerable and can reach up to 11%. Colonic cancer lymphatic spread was thought to be a linear process where cancer cells would migrate sequentially through the regional lymphatic bed from the submucosal lymphoid follicles towards the main lymph nodes. However, we now know that we can have skip metastasis where distant lymph nodes to the tumor are affected without any involvement of those more proximal. Skip metastasis of the main lymph nodes can occur up to 5%, mainly in T3 and T4 advanced tumors. A study where lymph nodes have been assessed using molecular techniques, which allows for the detection of occult metastasis, has found presence of malignant cells in much higher rates. The rationale of complete mesocolic excision is the in-block rejection of the diseased colon with its mesocolon and its lymphovascular supply in an intact envelope of visceral peritoneum. The three main components of the technique are a meticulous mobilization of the mesocolon away from the retroperitoneum without breaching the facial layer, a central vascular ligation together with a central lymphadenectomy along the anterior border of the superior mesenteric vein, and finally, the resection of adequate bowel length in order to perform a correct longitudinal lymphadenectomy. The optimal CME specimen has no facial defects. The stalks of the iliocolic vessels and middle colic vessels are connected by tissue of the surgical trunk, which represents the lymphatic tissue package covering the superior mesenteric vein. And finally, the mesocolic window, or sail as it is also called, has a complete medial flame of mesocolic tissue as shown in the picture. The vascular anatomy of the right colon presents with a high degree of anatomical variation and thus knowledge of these variations is fundamental when performing an operation like complete mesocolic excision. Starting with the arteries, the iliocolic artery is almost always present and very rarely can present itself with a division. The right colic artery is present only 60% of the times and when this is the case, it usually passes anterior to the superior mesenteric artery, but yet again, not always. Before embarking on a complete mesocolic excision, vascular anatomy must be thoroughly examined and no vessel should be taken for granted in order to avoid injuries. The gastrocolic trunk is an important complete mesocolic excision landmark for two reasons. The first consists of the possible perioperative bleeding, especially during the separation of the mesocolon from the pancreas. It is the second most injured vascular site during complete mesocolic excision after the superior mesenteric vein. It has a high anatomic variability with only the right gastroepiploic vein being always present. The lymphoadipote tissue located on the anterolateral aspect of the superior mesenteric vein from the iliocolic vein to the trunk of Henle is called the surgical trunk of Gilo and has to be cleared during the central lymphadenectomy. We start our operation by retracting the ileocecal junction laterocaudally, so the root of the ileocolic vessels are identified. The peritoneum is opened below the ileocolic vein, as in a classic medial to lateral dissection. The dissection is carried through the avascular plane of Tault between the intact mesocolic fascia and the retroperitoneum until the duodenum and the head of the pancreas are visualized. The area of lymphatic interest shown here 
is resected by carrying the dissection towards the first ELL branch of the superior mesenteric vein and then heading towards the confluence with the ileocecal vessels. This area represents a common place of lymphatic metastasis and should always be included in the specimen, especially when the tumor is located in the cecum. The confluence of the ileocolic vein is dissected free and sectioned between hemlocks. We continue our dissection harvesting all lymphatic tissue from the anterior side of the superior mesenteric vein until we identify the ileocolic artery. From the ileocolic artery, we see that a right colic artery emerges. The vessel is clipped at its origin laterally to the SMV border. Anatomic variation is very common in all vessels, arterial or venous, that are involved during a right, complete mesocolic excision, and the importance of preoperative identification of those variations cannot be overstated. The dissection continues cephalate along the superior mesenteric vein. The patient presents also a right colic vein, which is dissected and sectioned at its confluence with the superior mesenteric vein. All lymphatics in this area are being harvested. The dissection eventually takes us to the lesser sac, where the posterior part of the stomach is identified. As we carry our dissection cephalad, the handless trunk anatomy is identified, which is often a place of vast anatomic variation. In this case, it consists of two pancreatic branches, the gastroepiploic vein, which is the only one which is always present, and the right superior colic vein. Before managing the handless trunk, we continue our dissection in order to identify the middle colic artery. The middle colic artery is dissected at its origin from the superior mesenteric artery and cranially to identify its right and left branches. The right branch is prepared and sectioned between two hemlocks. Now the right superior colic vein can now be sectioned at its confluence into the handless tract, while the other branches are carefully preserved. Finally, we identify the gastroepiploic vein when we enter the lesser sac from above after opening the coloepiploic attachments. As a conclusion, a complete mesocolic excision seems to be adequate for stage 2 and 3 colon cancer. Latest literature shows equal pair and postoperative complication rates as the technique becomes more widespread. It still presents a difficult learning curve. And finally, 
we await the results of ongoing randomized controlled trials that might make it the gold standard in right oncologic colectomies.